Hi, everyone. In this last lecture for Chapter 5, we're going to be looking at medical applications for radioisotopes. As we talked about previously, radioisotopes with short half-lives are used in nuclear medicine for two reasons. The cells in the body can't differentiate between non-radioactive and radioactive atoms. And once those radioactive isotopes are incorporated into cells, the radioactive atoms are detected because they emit radiation, giving an image of an organ. Now, this is for medical imaging. Uh, a third reason could be for uh, cancer therapies. So sometimes we use radiation to kill cancer cells. But in this lecture, we're mostly going to be looking at uh, imaging using radioisotopes. And so here's a table showing some different metal, medical applications for various isotopes. I'm going to make it a little bigger so we can see it. So gold-198 has a half-life of 2.7 days. It's a beta emitter. We use this for liver imaging and for the treatment of abdominal cancers. Cerium-141 has a half-life of 32.5 days. It's a beta emitter. We use this for diagnosing gastrointestinal tract issues and measuring blood flow to the heart. Cesium-131 has a half-life of 9.7 days. It's a gamma emitter. We use this for prostate brachytherapy. Fluorine-18 has a half-life of 110 minutes, extremely short. It's a positron emitter and we use it for positron emission tomography or PET scans. Gallium-67, half-life of 78 hours. It's a gamma emitter. We use this for abdominal imaging and tumor detection. Gallium-68 is also radioactive. has a very short half-life of just over an hour. Gamma emitter, we use this to detect pancreatic cancer. Iodine-123 has a half-life of 13.2 hours. It's a gamma emitter. We use this to treat thyroid, brain, and prostate cancers. Iodine-131 has a half-life of eight days. It's a beta emitter. We use this to treat Graves' disease, goiters, hyperthyroidism, thyroid and prostate cancer. And we can also use it as a, an imaging tool. Iridium-192, half-life of 74 days. It's a gamma emitter. We use it to treat breast and prostate cancer. Phosphorus-32 has a half-life of 14.3 days. Beta emitter, we use it to treat leukemia, excess red blood cells, pancreatic cancer. Palladium-103, a half-life of 17 days. It's a gamma emitter. We use it for prostate breast therapy. Strontium-85 has a half-life of 65 days. It's a gamma emitter. We use it to detect bone lesions, and we use it for brain scans. Technetium-99, half-life of six hours. It's a gamma emitter. We use it for the imaging of skeleton and heart muscle, brain, liver, heart, lungs, bone, spleen, kidney, and thyroid. And it's the most widely used radioisotope in nuclear medicine. So um, this is um, used for a ton of different things. Uh, it's the most common. One. And yttrium-90 has a half-life of 2.7 days. It's a beta emitter, and we use it to treat liver cancer. So you don't need to know any of this. Don't memorize any of these. This was just for fun and to show you some of the different isotopes we use and what they're used for and the type of emission they give. And one thing you should notice is all of these, once again, have a very short half-life, which means they're giving off radiation very quickly, which is why they're useful for medicine. So let's talk about scans with radioisotopes. Uh, typically, with these scans, the patient has to ingest the radioisotope, and they do that by either injecting it uh, via IV, or sometimes they'll put it in a drink and make you drink it. Depends on what they're imaging and what isotope they're using. But once the patient has ingested it, uh, the radiologist will determine the level and the location of the radioactivity emitted by the radioisotope. So usually some tissue within your body will absorb that radioisotope, depending on which one it is. And then once it's in that tissue, it's giving off radiation and we can pick up that radiation using some sort of scanning device. 
the scanner will move slowly over the organ or tissue in which the isotope is absorbed. And the gamma rays emitted from the isotope can be used to expose a photographic plate producing a scan of the organ. So one example here, uh, this lady's getting her thyroid scanned. And so she's ingested, um, I believe it's iodine 131. And so the thyroid absorbs the iodine and you can see that it's lighting up here where the radioactive iodine is emitting radiation. And so having that radioisotope in the thyroid allows you to image that using the scanner. So the first type of imaging we're going to talk about is positron emission tomography, abbreviated PET or PET scans. So a lot of you probably heard of PET scans. Well, that's what it stands for. Positron emitters with short half-lives are used, and they can be used to study brain function, metabolism, blood flow. Some of the common isotopes that we use are carbon-11, oxygen-15, nitrogen-13, and fluorine-18. So here's an example of fluorine-18 undergoing positron emission. So the fluorine-18 emits a positron, and it gets converted into oxygen-18. And so once these positrons are emitted, they combine with electrons in the environment after emission to produce gamma rays, which are then detected by computers, creating a three-dimensional image of the organ. So here's just an example of a PET scan of somebody's brain. And so here's a normal brain on the left and a brain from somebody suffering from Alzheimer's on the right. And you can see the differences in brain tissue and these images are from detecting uh, the radiation being given off after the patient ingested the radioisotope. The next type of scan we're going to talk about is computed tomography, also known as a CT scan. And so computed tomography uh, is different in that you're not ingesting a radioisotope. So this imaging uh, comes from x-rays. Oops, whoa, whoa, excuse me. So we use X-ray beams for CT scans, uh, about 30,000 of them. And so we zap the body with X-rays and depending on the density of the tissue, dense tissues will absorb more X-rays and the less dense tissues uh, will have the X-rays penetrate further. And so we can use that to create this three-dimensional scan of the tissue. So here's a scan of um, somebody's head and brain. And you can see these color variations are based on tissue densities. And you can see this bright yellow spot here in the middle, that's a tumor. And so the brain tumor has a different tissue density than the healthy brain tissue. So we can see that based on the x-rays being absorbed by this tissue more than the regular brain tissue. So computed tomography uses x-rays and tissue density to um, create an image. So once again, this type of scan uses no radioisotopes. It just uses x-ray radiation, which is a type of high energy light. The next type of imaging we're going to talk about is magnetic resonance imaging, or MRI. And this one is unique in that it uses magnetic fields. And so there's actually no radiation. Which means it's actually the safest type of Im imaging. And so you can get as many MRIs as you need. And you have no worries about getting radiation poisoning. Um, it's just a really strong magnetic field. And the nuclei within your body tissues respond to the magnetic field. And they respond differently depending on how dense the tissue is once again. And so we can get a good 3D image of the body based on tissue density from the behavior of those individual nuclei within the tissue when they're in the magnetic field. 
So this is a zero radiation imaging technique. So here's an MRI scan uh, image of the heart and lungs. So the different tissue densities allow you to image the tissues separately uh, based on their behavior in the magnetic field. So quick study check. Which of the following isotopes are most likely to be used in nuclear medicine? Potassium-40 with a half-life of 1.3 times 10 to the ninth years. Potassium-42 with a half-life of 12 hours. Or iodine-131 with a half-life of 8 days. Well, anything in medicine, we want a short half-life for it to be useful. So we can see a half-life of eight days and 12 hours are relatively short. And so I would say that these are likely to be used in nuclear medicine. And this one is not because it does not decay fast enough. It doesn't give off enough radiation to be useful. And so looks like we were correct. So for this section, the things you should be familiar with are the different types of imaging, PET scans, CT scans, and MRIs, and what type of radiation they use. So PET scans use positron emitters, CT scans use x-rays, and MRIs use no radiation. And that concludes this lecture and the end of chapter five. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in lab this week.